This morning we listen to God's word for this Sunday entitled Saints Triumphant. Our first lesson from Isaiah chapter 52. Do you dress up for special occasions? Do you like to wear fancy clothes? We do that for important events. And here God tells his people to get dressed up. He is coming for his people. And he tells us to get ready. Awake. Awake, O Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Be uncircumcised and defiled, will not enter you again. Shake off your dust. Rise up, sit enthroned, O Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For this is what the Lord says. You were sold for nothing. And without money you will be redeemed. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. At first my people went down to Egypt to live. Lately Assyria has oppressed them. And now what do I have here, declares the Lord. For my people have been taken away for nothing. And those who rule them mock, declares the Lord. And all day long my name is constantly blasphemed. Therefore my people will know my name. Therefore, in that day, they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson today from Revelation chapter 19. As Revelation concludes the book, which is filled with wars and pain and struggles and death, a new picture emerges, one of joy and life and victory. Consider this beautiful picture of our Savior's return. After this I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. Twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who is seated on the throne. And they cried, Amen, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, who you who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah. For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Then the angel said to, the, said to me, write, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. Hallelujah! They are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. Hallelujah! Please stand for the gospel reading. Today we consider this lesson from Matthew chapter 25, beginning in verse 1. Jesus' return again is pictured as a wedding, and these women are waiting for it to begin. But some aren't fully prepared or committed for it. So Jesus calls all people to be ready. Are you ready? At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom! Come out to meet him! Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil! Our lamps are going out! No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. 
But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We'll consider a portion of the reading from Revelation. Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, you didn't come. I can still remember the discussion. It was right after confirmation one year. One of the girls in class had been asking me why I had not attended her confirmation party that was taking place on a different time opposite other ones. I didn't know what to say. So I went back and I started looking through some of my old mail and I figured out what had happened. The invitation was dropped off in the office and was put in my little mail slot over there. Then on top of that, some other things were piled, and I never actually saw it. And since I didn't see it, I didn't even know when it was, so I didn't go, and I missed out on it. And by the time I found it, it was too late. It was too bad, because I was available at the time. So, years later, when I was invited to her high school graduation party, I decided to make it up to her. I got there early and ate twice as much. You know, there's many celebrations that we are invited to. Sometimes you just can't get to all of them. Or sometimes you forget. Or sometimes the invitations just get lost in the clutter. But today our Lord wants to talk to us about another invitation that he's issuing today to us. An invitation to something very, very special. This is not one that you want to forget. This is not one you want to lose. So listen today as we open the invitation from our Lord. You know, the key verse in this section that I read was this, it says, the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Now we're reading, of course, from the book of Revelation. Sometimes when you read from Revelation, you know, uh, people say it's hard to understand what Revelation is, is trying to tell us. Perhaps some of the reason for that is that God uses imagery and illustrations or draws pictures for us in the book of Revelation. He, he teaches us, but he also, with an illustration, perhaps impacts our emotions and how we feel about it by the things that he draws for us and helps us to picture. But God does that in other places than Revelation. And since Revelation is just simply part of God's Word, we can also refer to other sections of God's Word to help us understand what he's trying to say here. That's what we'll do today as we kind of unpack open up this invitation a little bit. First of all, we have to figure out what's going on. There's a wedding, he says, and there's an invitation that's being issued for it. And the first question we have is, who's getting married? Well, he says here, the lamb is getting married. So we wonder, who is the lamb? Maybe the first passage that comes to your mind is from John chapter 1, the Gospel of John, when John the Baptist is standing there and all of a sudden this man goes walking by and he says, look, 
the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then we realize, well, who was walking by? That was, that was Jesus who was walking by. And then we wonder, why would John the Baptist call Jesus a lamb? And then we open up to the Old Testament and see there are many different places where God commanded that lambs, those little animals, would be sacrificed for sin as a way of reminding people about the consequences of sin, that death would come and that blood would have to be shed and that a lamb would have to give life for there to be salvation and ultimately pointing ahead to the Lamb of God. And so the Lamb is getting married and the Lamb is Christ. Well, if that's the groom, then who's the bride? It says that the bride has made herself ready. Well, we look again elsewhere in Scripture. Perhaps to Isaiah chapter 54, where it says, For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Lord will call you back as if, as if you were a deserted wife. Remember that a little bit from the Old Testament? When God's people were in exile, they had been separated from God, really, as a result of their sins. And you know what God described them as? A wife that was deserted. But God was going to call them back. Who's the bride? The bride is God's people. It's the church. It's his followers. Just like the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, when he's talking in that section about marriage, husbands and wives, roles in marriage, remember that part? And that's where he says, this is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. So who is the bride? The bride is the church. It's God's people. It's believers. It's, it's us. That's the bride. So that's the marriage. It's between Christ and his people. And it says... The bride gets dressed. In fact, the section here said that the bride gets fine linen from the groom. And then it even describes what that fine linen, in, fine linen is. It says fine linen, linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints, or perhaps could be better translated, just the righteousness of the saints. The groom gives the clothes to the bride to wear. Nice clothes, fancy clothes and in spiritual terms, righteousness. Like John mentioned elsewhere in the book of Revelation, white robes that God's people are clothed with his righteousness, with his forgiveness, with his peace. And that's how the bride gets dressed up for the wedding to meet the groom by putting on his righteous life, his forgiveness. Okay, so we're unpacking this whole thing. We're reading through this invitation. We just have to find out what it is again. They said it's a, it's a wedding. What is a wedding? A wedding is a time when two people come together, when there is love, when there's a relationship there. That's what a wedding is. And so what Revelation is describing to us here is a time when the Lamb, Jesus, and his bride, his believers, are joined together. He's talking about Judgment Day. He's talking about the end of the world. And he's talking about it as a beautiful picture when Jesus comes to rescue his people, his people who are clothed in his righteousness and forgiveness, and he takes them out of this veil of tears that we call earth to be with him in joy forever and to live in a blessed relationship. You know, that's probably a little surprising if you've read Revelation lately or whenever the last time was that you read it. And that's not how the rest of the book goes, right? Because when you read it, there's pictures of all kinds of other things that are going on. There's, there's trumpets being blown, there's seals being opened, there's bowls being poured out, and in each one of those things that happens, all we see is, is a bunch of destruction and pain and death over and over again. And we hear 
this voice of people crying, How long, Lord? How long until you come? And in many ways, when Revelation is, is drawing us a kind of an emotional picture of, is to be able to see pretty much what we see every single day. Right? From, from a spiritual point of view, dying and loss and destruction. Jesus said before the end of the world, the love of most people will grow cold. Do you ever see that happening? Do you see people growing cold in the world in the way that they treat each other? He said that before the end of the world, many people are going to fall away. There will be many people who don't have time for God, who will per pursue evil, sinful lifestyles, and that will become their God, their own pleasure. He said that's going to happen. Jesus said before the end of the world there'll be earthquakes and famines. Do we see those kinds of things going away? There'll be false teachers. Do we see those kinds of things? I mean, does it ever seem that in this world that God's people, the church, it just seems so weak, so insignificant and unimportant, and that so many other things seem so much more important than the church or the things of the church or the word of God. Isn't that the way it seems? Doesn't God and his people seem so weak? Doesn't it seem more that if you are an individual who trusts the word of God and is willing to love someone else unconditionally, that you'll be taken advantage of. And if you're the kind of person that's willing to be wildly generous, then someday you'll be left wanting. And if you're an individual who decides we're just going to forgive and forget, that you'll be stepped on. That if you're willing to talk about God and make that part of your life, that you'll be ignored or worse, ridiculed or even worse, persecuted. Isn't that what we see? And that's why John, at the end of this book, wants us to know, here's what's really going to happen. The Lamb is going to come again. He's going to come with victory. He's going to demonstrate that He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords and he's going to rescue all of his people who are living in this veil of tears that we call earth and take his people home to be with him. And he said it's going to be like an amazing wedding celebration. An amazing celebration that you want to be at. That you don't want to miss. And that's why today he offers the invitation to save the date to prepare for his coming. As he says, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Jesus offers you his wedding invitation now. He offered it to you when he called you to faith, when you heard his word, when you were baptized, when you trusted in him. But the question for us then is, do you know where your invitation is? Did you lose it? Are there so many other things cluttering up your life that you don't even know if you have it anymore? Have you forgot about it? Have other things filled your mind and your heart that you're not even thinking about it anymore? That like those ladies waiting for the wedding, they weren't even ready when it came. Jesus today calls and reminds us, you better find your invitation. You better find your invitation at the cross where Jesus gave up his life for you. You better find your invitation at the empty tomb where he rose again for you, where he sealed his promises, and then he calls us.
He calls us to live this life that despite all the things that we see, sometimes death and destruction and weakness for following Christ in the world, he says he calls you and me to trust in him and to hold to him, to confess our sins and to live our lives to honor him. Because Jesus says he's coming soon. And he doesn't want us to miss out. So find your invitation offered in the blood of Jesus. And get ready. Because he's coming soon. You know, we'll play some music that reminds us of that. A little bit of Christmas, certainly more at Easter time. Probably get to hear a, a very famous song that was written about 300 years ago called Handel's Messiah. And there's a popular part of that called the Hallelujah Chorus. Maybe you've heard that pretty famous work. And in that they sing over and over again, hallelujah, hallelujah. The word hallelujah is just, it's two little Hebrew words kind of taped together. The word hillel, which means praise, and then the yuh part is like the word uh, Jehovah. Those two words are put together, that's where you get the word hallelujah. It just means praise the Lord. Well, those words come right out of this lesson. This is the only time in the New Testament when the word hallelujah is used. It's used four times here. And then that section that I read before, it says, For the Lord Almighty reigns. And if you remember from the Hallelujah Chorus, he says over and over again, The Lord omnipotent reigneth. It comes right out of here. But he keeps saying the same thing over and over again. He keeps saying, The Lord omnipotent reigneth. The Lord omnipotent reigneth. He says it over and over. And it's like, why does he keep saying it over and over again? Maybe it's because when you and I look at the world, it doesn't seem like the Lord omnipotent reigneth. It seems that trouble reigneth, or sin reigneth, or the devil reigneth, or death reigneth. It doesn't seem like God reigneth. <laughs> but from these words we see, you know, God is the one that reigneth. And God, God does reign over all things. And he's coming for his people with a shout of hallelujah, praise the Lord. And today in the shed blood of Jesus, in the waters of baptism, in the blessing of the Lord's Supper, he issues you an invitation to save the date, to prepare your hearts, and to help others get prepared too, because he's coming. So don't lose your invitation. Don't let it get filled up with all the clutter of other stuff in life. Prepare. For the Lamb, your groom, comes to save you. Amen.